Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dark Match for TNA Impact, October 19th, 2012. I'm Digi Fox, and I'm the Fox with the Socks. I am I'm... Jim the Rabbit Cow, your lucky janitor, I guess. God, I need some coffee. I like shoes. That was Allie, and I'm Mega Fire Free, the Matt Striker of Dark Match, with what is Iron Cheek Tree now? <coughs> Fuck the Luna Love Good Dumb Bitch. Hashtag Team Sheiky. Oh, okay. The Iron Sheik is picking on Harry Potter characters now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, he has targeted yeah. Luna Love Good. Did, did, did Ivana Lynch do something stupid? <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. But Well, it's conceivable that the Sheik probably sees dead, undead uh, you know, horses. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's all the drugs that he does. What are you talking about? Sheik is straight as they come. Huh. Not what I heard. It's a very strange choice of people, of person who targets Luna Lovegood. Yeah, he's going after fictional characters now. But hey, Impact, how about that? Yeah, speaking of fictional characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, impact. There was really nothing to this impact. Like, I got my start on this very same kind of episode last year, the Postbound for Glory show. At Is least the Postbound for Glory show of last year, it started off pretty stupid with a 45-minute opening segment with free commercial breaks. This, eh, Nothing. It was just for for a post bound for glory show. You want something really like uh, shitty, like a wham episode, and just we didn't get it. It was just oh. it was dog shit. Like even if you want to go, st- if you even if you want to go terrible, you want to go over the top stupid. <coughs> like feature absolutely no wrestling. Forty five minutes of talking. <laughs> this just meh. But, uh, so, of course, we started off with uh, the Aces of Eights who have now have full access to the Impact Zone. Yay, because, you know, it's not like they weren't wandering around fle- freely as it was. I was just going to say, do you notice how these things always tend to happen at the same time? What? You know, just like these storylines tend to happen around the same time of the year. Huh. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've fallen into a, a bit of a, a cyclical pattern. Shit, we have to make an NWO. Hold on. Got a point. Always the post match or post. Uh, Actually, no, they got for... Devon, so it's the Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse. Oh. Okay. Well, Aww. first of all, I'll, I'll I'll tell straight up. Here's my problem with Devon being the leader of Aces Eights. Okay, this Black. is how Devon <laughs> talks. I don't think. Get up, boy. It. Get up, boy. Oh my! Oh my brother, testify, and that's not how the. How he talked when he had the hood over his face and the <laughs> mask. But apparently, I don't remember much about Devon's promo, other than the you sold out chance, which don't really make sense. I mean, it's not like he's become the corporate champion or something. He's joined a biker gang. It's not selling out. And two... I remember one of the things Devon said was, these guys have been with me since I started. I looked that up. Devon got her start in 2005. Two of the members of Aces and Eights, Cliff Compton and Drew Hankinson, the former Luke Gallows. <laughs> so according to Devon, while, while Domino and the freaking Deacon were in OVW, they always had Devon's back. Yeah, I, 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 I don't believe that. <laughs> it's TNA logic. Don't just don't try to think of it. Trust me, Backlash oh. tried that one night. I'm still trying to clean the vomit out of the carpet. Oh. So basically, Devon's getting a lot of heat, a lot of you sold out chance, and all that stuff. Sold in. Yeah, he, he thanks Aces Eights for helping him testifying. 
So he, he does. He does. He basically does his stuff, which makes no sense now because he's a biker. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have imagined Devon would have ever been a biker, but that's just me. Reverend, yes, and he has done that with Deacon <laughs> Batista. Yeah, he makes a good priest, but I, as a motorcycle guy, I just never saw it. Sounds nuts. Sounds like a Pulp Fiction ripoff. <laughs> One way to put it. But then so... Now come uh, Bully Ray, Sting, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, Hernandez, Storm, Anderson, Styles, Chavo, and uh, Garrett Bischoff. Yes, he's back, Garrett Bischoff. You know, in fact, it was so much better when he wasn't around. <laughs> oh. See, I think it was... I thought if they made Garrett, Bisch- uh, Garrett Bischoff the head of Aces and Eight, just everyone would be like, what? And then suddenly all the TVs all around the world just get thrown right out the window. <laughs> I, would, I would go down there and, and just... It, it, I, it's it's kind of tasteless to make a Columbine joke at this point, but yeah. Well, they could have, because remember, this is Florida we're talking about. We all know what Nash says. It's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I'm, st- I'm just trying to remember what happens next because how completely uneventful this episode was okay well my, my results say Sting comes out so yeah admittedly I, I missed the first 10 minutes of this show so I watched the rest of it, I swear to God. <laughs> just this first ten minutes, I'm like, go, kind of going off the results. Yeah. People are wanting to fight Devon. Sting wants to fight Devon. Bully Ray wants to fight Devon. When did Bully Ray become a face? Um, When Devon became heel? <laughs> I think they were building up to the face turn, but then when Bully Ray had... Uh, at Bound, uh, at Bound for Glory, went, Devon, why? He decided, okay, Bully Ray's face now. Yeah, they they, <coughs> they solidified his face turn at Bound for Glory. God, I missed my vacation. <laughs> All right. So, so. Th- that, that's kind of how the segment ends. Uh, Bubba wants to fight his brother, but Hogan... Says no, no, you know, fuck you, brother. Sting's gonna fight him. Pretty much. We get a video package at uh, Pound for Glory of a you know recap of Pound for Glory. Yeah, uh, jeez. Hogan's talking to Ken Anderson. Yep, both James has. Uh, Hardy's going to defend the title against one of four men. James Storm's already in there. Free main match later tonight for the second spot. And he wants Anderson to have the third spot because they finally remembered hey, Anderson's been never to one contender twice so far, and he's never had his title matches. Because that's the way I put it. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah. Again, more talking, more Hogan bullshit. And, and, then, and then we have our first match of the evening, Samoa Joe versus Robbie E. For the TV Wait, title. Wait, a match after Bound for Girl? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Well, I know. I, here I thought they were just going to have one long talking segment the whole evening. It's, yeah, be like it's, really early, it's a bit early for matches. But yes, it's Samoa Joe versus Robbie E. for the TV title. <coughs> and... Well, let's just say Samoa Joe kills Robbie E. dead. Cooking a yeah, clutch. Just, Robbie yeah. E.'s wearing another ridiculous shirt. Those ugly, those ugly, ugly sweaters. Hey, those, those are beautiful sweaters, man. Those were knitted by Dixie. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> she did it with. Nah, never mind. Let's let's just move on. 
So yeah, so Joe Joe ends up choking Robbie out. Robbie T guys tries to go after Small Joe, but it was like, fuck you, you get choked out too. And yeah, you know, <coughs> a, a lot of people are, are talking about his mo cut. And I, 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 of course, saw it for the first time at Bound for Glory, and I'm just like, oh my god, it looks fucking stupid. Oh, that mohawk. <laughs> oh. It's like, you know, kids are wearing the, are wearing adult hairstyles, and adults are wearing kids' hairstyles. Mm. Once again, TNA logic. Yeah. This is apparently what's helping Black get Joe up. over is the freaking hair. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so Tara, she's being bench pressed by her her uh, Hollywood boyfriend, where the fuck his name is. Jesse Goddard's from Big Brothers. From Big Brother. Yeah. And no one fucking cares. <laughs> I'm just like, who the fuck is this? And you gotta get one of the guys from Survivor that no one ever knows. And then Joe Rogan from Fear Factor. Mm. Scraping so the bottom. This- yeah, scraping the bottom of the celebrity <laughs> Survivor. Whatever. Yeah, Johnny Fairplay in the early in the early <laughs> years of TNA. <laughs> but now we move on to Terra versus ODB. Before ODB actually enters, we get her arguing with uh with Eric Young over the phone again. Oh, she's yeah, she's talking to Eric Young on the phone. Blah, 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 blah. You know what would be, you know be a fun thing to see for this uh, whole <laughs> Eric Young's not there angle? Is if they finally needed to defend the knockout tag titles and there's like, well, Eric might not be here, but I have an old friend of mine from a long time ago that I like to defend the knockout titles with. And then they bring out Jingus. Nice. That'd it's be like great. Some, just like ODB says, you know, I know that I knew this guy at USWA that I used to date that would make for a good angle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he would, because he would probably have to lose by a fucking roll up. <laughs> oh god. Now I'm just waiting <laughs> for them to defend their knockouts title on the boat Eric Young is always on. <laughs> People are fishing in the background, whatever, and Eric Young's on it. Like, first one overboard loses. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're talking about this because we want to. We really want to avoid talking about this match, hmm. which I, I, I guess I mean it's got Victoria in it and it's got ODB, so better than if like Kelly Kelly was rest, wrestling Alicia Fox. <laughs> True. So that happens and. ODB hits the TKO. It's a win. <coughs> then we get Brooke Tessmacher, but of course she's not wearing her Superman outfit, so I didn't. I didn't know she. It's like, is that Dixie Carter? And like, no, nah, she's too young. <coughs> well, more backstage. You know, they might as well just fucking kiss at this point. AJ Styles. And Kurt Angle. <laughs> no, no, and, uh, to be fair, no. He AJ wouldn't do that. He wouldn't betray Christopher Daniels like that. Yeah, even though he's currently going out with Taz or not, not Taz, Kaz. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mental image for everyone. <laughs> oh, War Machine, where are oh, you? Oh yeah, right, yes, right, right, right in the fucking yam bags. Oh. Oh God. So yeah, I I fucking digress. Hmm. So more stuff with the aces of eights. They're of course now they're they're allowed the carte blanche to the whole impact zone. So they go to the immortal parking lot where <laughs> the parking lot immortal used to hang out with last year. <laughs> yeah, well, that's aces of now. That's and whatever parking lot par- that's outside the impact zone. And the same parking lot that ninjas kidnapped Samoa Joe in. This is truly a historic parking lot, gentlemen. Yeah, it has, has a lot of rich cinematic history behind it. Get another video package with uh, Chavo and Hernandez winning the tag titles. 
Christopher oh boy. Daniels. Christopher Daniels says when the rematch happens, they're gonna kick their asses, gonna kick the dog shit out of them because they're the only world tag team <laughs> champions of the world. <laughs> and then speaking of such, we get. The new tag champs, Chavo and Hernandez, defending against Kid Cash and fucking Gunner. Or as I like to call him, Kid Cash's pal. Yes. Oh my. I'm sorry, but I can't think of anyone teaming up with Gunner. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, Kid Cash, good wrestler, good heel, good uh, character and stuff, but just. I hit you. Kid Cash deserves better than Gunner. You could have. Road Warrior Animal teaming up with Gunner and it would still suck. Heck, I have to say, I hate to say this, but you could have vintage 1980s Hogan <laughs> team up with Gunner and it still suck. <laughs> just by the pure vir- virtue that it's Gunner. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, you know, out of anything. I'm pretty like vintage days, like glory days of Hulkamania. Dun, dun, Hogan comes out and Gunner and just crickets hit. <laughs> Hogan, when he could still pull off an ending to Geary, Gunner. Yeah, like Hogan, like ripping, like everyone's cheering, and and his partner Gunner, and everyone stops and just hear one guy, yay! And then they all beat him up. <laughs> oh man! So that's this match. It's <laughs> it has Gunner in it. What do you want? And Hernan- Hernandez doesn't even go over the top rope, and that's really the only thing the guy's got going for him. Mm. Sure isn't Chavo. And every time I, every time Chavo comes out with his little poncho, or whatever, I, I I think he's trying to dress up as a vulture for Halloween. Jesus. <laughs> I, that, that's what I see. That's that's what I, that's what's in my head. I'm like, I oh, miss the hobby to... horse you used to come out with. <laughs> Bring back that Chavo. That yeah, that was pretty epic. Or at least bring back your golf cart. <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. Sure, yeah, TNA, they, they can't. Sure. You know they can't afford it, and you know Chavo can't steal because that's copyright WWE material. You know, mm-hmm. Chavo can't <laughs> steal. I mean, that would be awesome. They could actually have Chavo do that. Like, go to Universal. Hey, listen, can I borrow? You know, you, you, the um, giant mechanical King Kong. Thanks. Look what I found. Comes out of the impact. We're we're trying to make this entertaining. We really are. We're trying, man. This was but it's fucking impact. This was a nothing episode. (laughs) So yeah, if if it seems like we're really unfocused and unhinged tonight, which honestly it's not for lack of trying, it's just because this fucking episode sucked. It was so vacuous. Yep. We get Jeff Hardy. Walking backstage. <laughs> Yay. <coughs> yeah. Then we've got uh, Joseph Park in Hogan's office with Sting. He wants to get his hands on aces and eights. Bully Ray wants to speak to Hogan. And he's like, no, we got to be on the same team here, brother. You can't speak to me alone. <coughs> then they talk. And talk and how they want to fight Diva and how he wants to fight Diva and how everyone yeah. wants to fight Diva. And then, yeah, Bully comes in and is like, I, I want to fight my brother. I know him like the back of my hand. And Hogan's like, Well, you didn't know him obviously as well as you think you knew. So, so it would be awesome to- if all of Ace and Ace was like failed, like partners of tag team partners. So like it's all got... just like a, it's just like a stable <laughs> made of Genetti's. You see, like, like you know, oh my got, god, that's it. Domino's in there. They got um, <laughs> Devon. Got... Next one's gonna be Matt Hardy. Like, oh my god, I got it. The oh. leader of Aces and Eights is Marty Genetti. <laughs> oh, it all makes sense. He's gonna do some sleeping pills and. Oh, uh, so you, so that happens, and then so we're now we're getting we're getting uh, oh yeah Jeff Hardy out for his um, his cele- his 
ring celebration, in celebration of winning the title at Bound for Glory. And for some reason, we still have Mexican American confetti. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> they, they haven't bothered to change the colors since last time they did something like this. What and then uh, Austin Aries comes out. He's got balloons. He's got cookies. Which was a reference to an incident back in 2004 where, uh, where uh, WWE is shooting a Royal Rumble commercial and a bunch of guys from Impact uh, crashed the uh, backstage area with balloons and cookies. <laughs> References. Yeah. Very few people know them. Hey, hell, I didn't even know that. I didn't care about it. <laughs> I didn't like, care to know about it. So yeah, Aries is like, he's trying to be a troll... And he comes out with a big plate of cookies, and he's like, you mad, bro. There was a we want cookies chant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, Harry's yeah, just... That's not, he's not being a good troll. What he's got to do He's got to not be gone for half a year, then just enter, do his music, come down, and leave. Jericho taught us how to properly troll people. So yeah, yeah, Jeff Hardy slaps the cookies out of his hands, and he's like, "What a heel!" <laughs> because I refuse stuff. to believe that a face would ever would ever say no to cookies. Megafire, listen, we know the Hardys well, okay? Cookies aren't nutritious. He needs grapes. <laughs> Those cookies Faces are just do not say no to cookies. Sugar. Those are full of sugar. He could be a diabetic. We don't know what stuff is in Jeff Hardy's system. Well, actually, we do know it's in Jeff Hardy's system. <laughs> Mess, paint. <clears throat> so much face paint in there. Oh, There is no more real <coughs> face. It's all face paint. <laughs> Here's a question, though, because I've seen pictures of like CM Punk going to the airport with the title. Does Jeff Hardy go to the airport with the face paint on? Yeah, with his eyes closed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm just picturing his scary children when he does that. I'm just picturing like a screener going, okay, next person looks up at Jeff Hardy. I'm going to need a lot of white gloves. So the, the point of this whole segment is uh, Aries spits on Hardy's title. And he, uh, Hardy basically kicks him for it and runs away and does the thing where he backs up the ramp holding, holding his, his new creature of the Lost Lagoon title up above his head. Yeah, no, it's, it's, Aries is supposed to be a heel for spitting on that belt, but I would spit on that belt for all eternity for how stupid it looks. Wait, what what title is it? Is it the normal title or is it the Jeff Hardy face title? It is it's a, a Jeff it's Hardy a new, face title. It is title. a new Jeff Hardy face title. Oh, then yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Hardy's the heel. Yeah, seriously, this is it's fucking. I'm Elder sorry. Uh, we, they're easily trying to rip off the whole Stone Cold Steve Austin skull title, but. The skull title was cool. It yeah. was badass. This this is a this is a fa- this is a failed art major student's project. Like, what do you mean pretty, I got an app for this? It's I'm art. pretty sure. Uh, ah, what was the name of it? Uh, I'm pretty sure Wu had uh, compared it to like a wild berry pop tart in terms of its original design. The new design's not much better, <laughs> but still, it just it looks awful. So, moving along here, we have an, our number one contender match, Christopher Daniels versus Kurt Angle versus AJ Styles. Wait, and he was in this match? I completely forgot that. <laughs> yeah, apparently he was. So, they, did they, they, they go on with the match, and it was, it was a pretty decent match with all these guys in it, so... It was, it was probably their only match that sort of ran through one commercial break. Yeah, and you got some really good workers in this in the ring. You got Angle, who even worn down as he is, can still freaking go. You got the younger guys, Daniels and Styles. So, all in all, good match. Yeah, I have a weird feeling that Angle is going to be the future serious version of Ric Flair. He's got to be, <laughs> like, in his 80s. Barely can stand, and he still got to try and go in the ring and fight someone. It's like, no, Kurt, no, 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 no. I get the feeling he might have like one good match in his 80s, and that'll be it. Hey, can make the Olympics. 
<laughs> yeah, well, or he's just going to hop himself up on so much pills that... <laughs> Give me a... Put those pills in my milk right now. But, Kurt, it shouldn't... Put the pills in my milk! I need to get my neck working. Your your doctor said you can't have milk now. You're now lactose intolerant. You hear that? Man. I am an American. <laughs> Give me my milk. So, Kurt Angle wins the match. Becomes number one contender. Again. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> and again. <laughs> Really far and away. A, a, okay. AJ's kind of upset that he kind of stole his thunder a little bit. And Angle AJ. tries to shake his hand, and a, AJ just blows him off, and he's like, "Forget it." And oh God, they're not going to turn AJ heel again, are they? I I think that's what they're trying to do, and honestly, if when has that ever worked? <laughs> see, if I was if I if I would make AJ heel, I'd make him taunt Angle by acting like stupid Angle, goofy Angle, like have him come out wearing a small cowboy hat, like. And just smiling at Angle like, hi. I remember this. Yeah. You want to play the guitar? Now, now we have unintentionally funny Angle. <laughs> oh, g- g- guess the drugs that Angle's on now. <laughs> or dress up like a drugs. werewolf like he was in that movie. <laughs> Twilight. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. Now we have a Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan segment. And now they're talking with Hulk Hogan. <coughs> it's H- Hogan's like, oh, I'm going to turn 87% to 97%. Uh-huh. So Hogan's actually cool with them, but I think he's just playing poker face. And then Yo, 97% Morgan... of 100 is still 97 of the craft. <laughs> And plus the fact, you know, you can't really call it a poker face when the only thing he's doing is wearing sunglasses. I mean, you always got to play real poker. There are a guy asking to remove that. Mm. And his bandana, and we do not want that. Yeah, and then Morgan gets up in Hogan's face and basically, you know, says, you know, I, 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 I fart in your general direction. <laughs> and then... Hogan kind of grins and then walks away. End of segment. Hogan needs his pills, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I, I gotta go, like, get my little, like, little, like, erection thing and do stuff with it. Where's the car battery, brother? <laughs> Ew. Oh. I, Ew. Uh, I digress from that shit. Yes, we look back at the the uh, induction of Sting into the TNA Hall of Fame. By God, how sad does this look? Uh, I, I thought they already did this at a uh, Slammiversary. No, apparently that was the that was the unofficial induction. This is the real official oh. induction where everyone's in casual. <laughs> and it looks These like are the great some legends sort of we dying. have in TNA. Sting. That is all. <laughs> and apparently they did remember that Kurt Angle did like a show at a at TNA once. Well, if they're going to rip off the Hall of Fame, why aren't, why aren't they inducting like seven or eight dudes? Uh, because like, one, like they would the... have to get, because <laughs> one, all the people that had talent on TNA back in the old days that are considered legends no longer work with them. Shark Boy's no longer there. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could yeah. have at least inducted Candido. The only legend they can probably get from the classic TNA would probably be Kid Cash, Jeff Jarrett. That's it. And by Maybe the way, Kent. much like Sting, they're all currently working at this time. Yeah. Like, maybe they could get Kem Shamrock, but I don't know. I, th- I think he might be too good for this shit, so. <laughs> and that's the yeah, other that's... issue. Half the people are too good for this shit. <clears throat> I think the only one they could get is Candido, and he wouldn't be able to say no. Like I got it, anyway. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. I got like a, I forget I forget what I have. I have a DVD that has like freaking um, 
Diamond Dallas Page in it. I got one of their matches when they had freaking the Alpha Male. It's like I'm looking at all these guys. Like these guys would should be in a TNA freaking Hall of Fame, but that's not gonna happen. Freaking Roddy Roddy Piper's in one of them. It's like there's a legend right there, and <laughs> nope, fuck no. Maybe they could induct Ric Flair, but <laughs> oh, they that ship has sailed. <laughs> oh yeah. They go to the thing. Listen, listen. Here, here's a TNA ring to go through WWE ring. I already got two. I got three now. Awesome. Anyway, we sh- we should probably move on here. Yep. So we have our pretty much our another segment featuring James Storm. Mm-hmm. And he comes out, and he says. I had I had two things on my bucket list. One was to kick the crap out of Bobby Roode, and two was to drink beer. <laughs> that is the worst bucket list ever. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, th- here's the list. Uh, it goes: uh, kick uh, Bobby Roode's ass, beer, 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 and beer, beer, and and, and maybe swim. S- swim some creeks and listen to Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he had that at first, but he crossed out to put down beer. <laughs> and then, uh, something you know, rude comes really out. Right on that list, there's like beer. Mm, something's missing. Oh, beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and keg. Okay, so so. Bobby Roode comes out, and it kind of looks like Roode's gonna kind of say, "Well, you're kind of you, you were the better man, and you know what? I still don't like you, but you know you beat me." But then, but then he kind of does this, you know, upside down weird logic where you needed me to, or you needed you, you need you needed me so you could beat me, so you could make it make a name off me, and I'm still better than you. Just kind of weird, and then so basically he's like, "You didn't kick my ass. I let you kick my ass, and so I'm still the better man." Yeah, that's, 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 that's a stretch saying. even for a heel. <laughs> I really hope they actually keep that gimmick with him because just could just imagine like you know you ate my sandwich. No, you wanted me to eat your sandwich. Therefore, I ate the sandwich. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. What? <laughs> Yeah, he, he uses subversive logic to try to excuse his actions. <laughs> yeah, it actually be pretty good. And then, yeah, Storm basically he basically says Bull, bullshit and bullshit and fucking kicks him in the face and yeah. and end segment. Sorry about your damn luck. Then we get more backstage stuff like Devon training and Sting walking. Total non-stop action. <laughs> Pumping iron. Then we get oh. another clip from the Hall of Fame induction. And the main event, Devon versus Sting. Oh, old because person versus old seats. person. Because we all asked for it. Not the thing that makes sense, like Devon versus Bubba. No, no, no. Devon versus Sting. Old person versus old person. Question is Sting still like in charge? Like, is he like the GM or whatever? <clears throat> I think that's Hogan. Yeah, he he stepped down and let Hogan take over as GM because that way he could get back in the ring. Yay! Yeah, he he he's he's the Triple H to Hogan's Vince McMahon. I was gonna say the Al Snow to uh, Mick Foley, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's probably a better analogy. <laughs> so we get this match, and it, basically it's a it's basically a brawl. It was what it amounts to. Yeah, it's just uh, doesn't like, last too long. And I'm sorry, I just really do not see Devon as a cred- credible evil villain of the entire. In like, there are some characters you could use, like, like. To basically be the basic heel face. Like Triple H did that for years. He was good at it. Fucking yeah, he, Orton did it for a while. He was good at it. Punk was good at it. Devon 
I, I'm sorry. No. Devon just doesn't seem. <laughs> First he, off, he, he, he's fat. He doesn't seem. He doesn't seem smart enough. You know. Yeah, and like, like I, he's the guy who basically drove people through tables time and time again. He, he was. Like, no offense, Devon has always been the lackey. Yeah. yeah, there's that too. I mean, you know, Bubba, little, like Bubba would, you know, tell him get the table. Bubba will pick up the bat, the uh, the guy, throw him on the ground, and the only thing Devon has to do is jump in between the guy's legs, and then the headbutt. But it's just like I don't, I don't see. See, Devon doesn't just ha- doesn't have that. I hate to say aura or whatever around him that doesn't scream, "I'm the evil villain." Where just in less than a year ago, he was fighting some <clears throat> storyline involving his kids or something. I don't. Yeah, it's like you like, spent that long have trying to build him up as you know, kind of the underdog of the company to have him come out. Yeah, I'm a bad guy now. Yeah, I comparatively like once again going back to the Nexus comparison, Wade Barrett. He you could buy in that kind of situation. Oh yeah, you know he's like, charismatic. He's manipulative. He's smug. He's also he has, a new face. Yeah, yeah. D- D- only time Devon ever did bad good was when he had that whole like I said the preacher the Reverend Devon thing because it was still with his character he was known to yell testify who did the whole spin around cross thing that was like okay we're gonna make you a reverend now he comes around you know my children you are all sinners blah 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 now yeah. give me your money and it yeah, was that, like, it, that worked that worked but I think, for him I, I think that was all that it was ever meant to be just basically like uh just a, like an annoying vocal sort of heel that never really gets anywhere, but not a, not a Bond villain, not not a mastermind. No, it's especially like, not of a biker gang. Yeah, just doesn't. I, like I, I would I would have bought Chuck Palumbo. Yeah, we we know about his hobbies with creating a motorcycle. It, yeah, it's like what was it? It's if it, like it, I could see Devon doing something like what Right to Censor was, where it's like. You know, this is all wrong. We shouldn't be watching this stuff. This is not wholesome, you know, whatever. This is against, you know, all that's good and holy. Coming down with a bunch yeah, of people I, in I, nice I dress like shirts. I could see that. Devon and Biker Gang doesn't mix. No. Bubba maybe, yes. Yeah. Bubba made sense. <laughs> that's why the whole stipulation, you're in charge. No, I'm not. Yeah, you kind of have a biker thing going. You beat people up with chains. You... Well, even Hogan made made more sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's you know, he has the look. Yeah, Baba though, it's like. Yeah. It's like having Jeff Hardy come to your door as a Jehovah's Witness. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. Yeah, it just. It's, <laughs> God, this would not not fucking work at all. <laughs> But uh, I'm no picturing Jeff Hardy. Would you like to buy Heath a Slater being a lumberjack? Tower? You know. Yeah. Don't be fair. Heath Slater would put his heart into fucking <laughs> selling the idea of a lumber of lumberjack Heath Slater. <laughs> that would only work if his manager was William Regal. <laughs> oh yes. Anyway, we should we should probably finish wrap it up here, guys. So Sting basically puts the Scorpion Deathlock, but of course, Aces of Eights come out now that they have the Carte Blanche to the place. Sting gets uh, he he gets the winner by DQ and then uh, the whole locker room empties. Yes, big big brawl. <clears throat> this of course, is how we end. Bully Ray comes out last, even though he was he wanted to he wanted to fight Devon more than Sting. And they have him come out last, and then he attacks, and they kind of run away, and and that's about it. That's that's fucking the end of the show. Yeah, I have to say though that the first two people to come out was Ken Anderson and Garrett Bischoff. Was like, really? The first two people to see the rescue is Anderson and Bischoff. I mean, I, Anderson, I get, but does Garrett Bischoff think he's underdog? Oh. Here I come to save the day, or you know, it's like, ah, oh. it's like no. No, you're Garrett, get Garrett, your Garrett, ass Garrett I know you're trying. I know you want us to like you. Just just go back and sell kids cotton candy at the concession stands, okay? <laughs> Please, we, we don't need you. <clears throat> at least at least dress like a wrestler. Don't dress like a high school kid. He's, yeah, he's dressed like the guy. He, he, literally, I see, I see Garrett Bischoff as the guy that's supposed to be 
in the crowd that the champ challenges for the title. You know, hey, who wants to fight me? Anyone in this crowd? You. Yeah, you. You in the um, sweatpants. Get up here. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. He's the mark in the crowd. That's why I see. That's that's why I, whenever I watch, even when I went to go see him live, it's so like, shouldn't he be in the crowd with us yelling at them? He doesn't. Yeah, but if he was in the crowd with you two, you would have kicked his ass. No, 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 no. There's, there's plenty of people who have kicked his ass. Trust. All right. Okay, okay, me. guys. Let, let's let's wrap there. it up. So, now we have to play a magical game called "What Gets More Screen Time Than Jay Lethal." Ah. Uh, um. Samoa Joe's his faux hawk or whatever gets more screen time. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Ah, uh, I got one that's kind of Hogan related, but not really TNA related. <clears throat> Go ahead. Hogan's upset that he has to sue Bubba the Love Sponge. <laughs> yeah. Um, gets cookies more screen and, time. Cookies and balloons get more screen time than Jay Lethal. Ali. Uh, Victoria Terrace. Ken doll boyfriend gets more screen time. <coughs> well, uh, the ugly belt gets more screen time. <laughs> I would say logic, but that doesn't fit here. What logic? Logic actually gets less screen time. Yeah, because Florida. But it's now time to give out our our props here. Uh, yep. Don't, Don't forget, forget to, to subscribe to us on Blip TV or <laughs> yeah, YouTube you to keep up to date with all of our videos. You can also like us on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. You can also follow us individually on Twitter as well. Don't forget to check out TRE Productions where all our videos plus other great stuff is hosted. We're also on RVT in the community section. And last but not least, visit us at Spoonie Experiment in the forums where we can tell you how much of an idiot you are. All right, that'll do it for tonight's show. I'm I'm Digifox. I'm Mega Fire Free, and apparently we're not on Tech Out of the Glasses in the Box section. <laughs> um, I'm Jim the Rabbit Cow, and I swear to God, the next time you guys have a three-month break, let me know before you lock up the damn room. I swear to God, I was trapped in here for a month. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Well, at least we didn't leave a mess in the can. Well, on that bombshell, you let's didn't. get out of here. Someone did. Well, on that bombshell, let's get out of here. Cue the music. <laughs>